Well, game two, you mentioned we need to see a couple of corrections from Rival here. Do you like their picks ban phase, though, with this style of composition they've run for, objective clip focused? I think it was a little bit different in compared to what we're accustomed to seeing sure. from Rival because I'm not used to seeing Rapio on yeah, a play. Guardian kind of jungle. I'm, we're more used to the Thors, for example. The and, aggressive style. Yes. And mm. so he was still able to maintain an aggressive play style with that Amir, but he did have to start out a little bit passive. And I think that's why we saw that initial shakiness from Rival. Well, into picks and bands we go, and we'll see what changes this time round. Edix will be first pick and rival second. Are we expecting the same sort of bands, at least? I would anticipate the same kind of bands. Okay. You, and I, I can never go wrong with an Osiris band. That guy is just way too annoying in the solo lane phase right now. And I, I completely respect Enix's choice to take it off the board. Sol banned out this time by Rival. They think Sol is that strong right now that they don't want to give up as a first pick option. All they want about it because they don't want to play it themselves, I guess, is the other question. I, I would say nothing wrong with just taking it out of the way. That's true, 50 I meter guess. fly is a very proficient mid laner. I would not want to see what he can do with the soul. I mean, we we already saw what Rival can do with mm -hmm. the soul, so I, I'm sure that he would be just as able to play it. Well, Susano Salt banned out by Rival. It's over to Enix for the first pick now. A couple of options available to him. Fafnir, the dominant one, but Terra comes through this time. I, I like the Terra selection. Well, over Fafnir? I'm not so I, sure. I would like it. Um, it depends on what Enix opts into. With the Terra being on the board, I'd imagine they're looking for still another sustain-oriented mm -hmm. god, or at least just a very tanky frontline composition. Because with the Terra, you just have so much mobility because of her ultimate. And then on top of that, she deals a decent bit of damage. It's not bad. It's a flex pick. The damage is more often so than the heal from the monolith. I don't know the heal from the ultimate, a bit of a different story. But they can also pick up Honbats here, so a bit more focus on team fight ultimates here coming out from Enix a little bit more. Obviously, they didn't have much CC last game. They've got plenty of those three, first three gods this game. They have a ton of CC already for Enix, which I, I really like. And I also like the trade-off of the Medusa with the Kern. So we're going to get to see that matchup just from opposite sides. Yeah. See what happens this time around. And if we can see Welsh Beast return the favor there to Dobson that happened in the last game. Bologna picked up and now Nox banned out by Rival, surprisingly enough there. A little bit worried about those silent CC chains potentially coming through. Through. And it's a little bit worried that we could see a repeat from Rapio in the jungle. I'll let you admit. I think that the Nox ban is a very smart one to make because you don't want to have to worry about the silences when you're trying to play the Fafnir or even the Bologna because mm -hmm. Nome was constantly jumping in with his Eagles rally and you can't get away with doing that if you're facing off against the Nox. And finally, the Morrigan banned out by Enix. Rival now have one pick for themselves. Mid lane here more than likely. No, jungle. And you were mentioning, you know, Rapio's normally on the aggressive style gods. <laughs> Gonna go back to Thor now that Yume was taken away. And Thor is such a classic pick for Rapio and he plays it so well that zero reason for him to not opt into it if it's available. Yeah, Poseidon picked up once again for 50 meter fly in the mid lane. Didn't feel like his Krakens really made an impact in that game. It took a lot. He kind of held him a lot longer than he probably should have. And then when he didn't hold him, they weren't really <laughs> good anyway. He kind of struggled. Again. You also have to consider that he didn't have a whole lot of setup. In, in game number one, his team was lacking that CC, and that setup is really what you want for Poseidon. Sure, if you're a great Poseidon, you can land that. Mm -hmm. And I, I think, though, for a console, it can be a little bit more difficult. So now that he has the Humbots and the Terra and the Medusa, even the Guan Yu has a setup potential for the Poseidon, I think that this pick can work out a little bit better for the Funer Fly here, but I love the Hades. You do? I'm a little bit concerned about Hades up against the Poseidon, because the one thing you don't want to do as any character against a Poseidon is stand still to eat Krakens and Whirlpools, it's kind of what Hades does. It's kind of what Hades does, but it's Hades. And it, it is. He also does a ton of damage right now. Yeah, his damage potential is really insane right now, really on the strong side. Uh, clearing the wave as well as applying it. Obviously, the Blight lasting a little bit longer was one of the changes, and then some more changes to the way the Devour Souls and things work has allowed him to become a little bit more meta, seen a little bit more often. We've seen it on the PC and the SPL, and now on SEL, played by Watson. And it would be a god that Watson would lean towards in the mid lane, at least. It, it really suits his play style. Because he has the option, if he wants to, to just go all in and take up the 1v1. But he can also just play it safe and team oriented. Let's talk about 1v1. This is a 2v2 right now. And the box off is really happening. Azarik loses the tail under this. I will say Hades is in hands and the most dangerous ones. And if anyone, if you're going to poke someone down, I wouldn't really want to poke Watson. I'd probably poke Rapio. Just because Watson can do this in a second when he presses three and get back to full health again.
It's looking like Rapio and Watson might find the better trade-off of this clear, but they're not looking for the aggressive route just yet. Instead, leaning towards their own jungle side. Yeah, you need a couple of abilities for both Thor and Hades really to make a huge impact, unless someone's going to stand in your way and let you deal damage to them. Both the solo laners, though, started those elementals in the middle, and they may have just split those one for one. I'm not 100% certain, but level two is online already for Gnome. It tells me that Predators was a little bit further behind here, and now with Azabek coming in, he's definitely going to be a little bit behind the experience. Gotta appreciate the map awareness, I should say, from Rival. Not really looking to play overly aggressive and just kind of farming out their own buffs. Yeah, indeed. And that's all they want to do in the early game is get those levels online. Left hand side, though, Rival going to use that lane pressure they have early on here to start bringing down this purple buff. Red buff is still standing too, but they're fully committed to the purple and 50 meter fly. Now rotating from Enix to potentially contest, or at least just Ward, means Rival will get the purple buff for free and they're going to go straight for the red. They might get the wow. red buff. They, they have Hello? a lot of clear on the side of Kern and Fafnir. And it, it's looking like Enix are willing to forfeit this. I'm really surprised that Enix's dueling didn't do anything about that there. They knew they went into the jungle. They knew they were probably doing at least purple or red and ba babies as well. Instead, they just lose their whole side of the jungle. Granted, they're going to get oracles, which gives them some vision, but Rival come out on top in that trade massively. Four-way split of the oracles as well, so not exactly an even trade-off. And plus, if Rival are able to secure their own purple and red buff, then Jacob and Dobson are going to be hitting level five pretty early. Yeah, and that's the thing, they're gonna, both the dual laners here should get ahead of their opposition from Enix. Both of Rival should hit level five, which means when you think about the fact the Wild Hunt will be on a little bit earlier than the ultimate from Terra, it's gonna cause them a lot of problems, and Terra could be the one I'd be focused on if I was Rival here in the lane. When you hit level five, maybe focus the Terra, turn into a pig. Obviously, Welsh Beast will have beads. That's not the case for a Terra. That seemed like the case last game. They, I mean, there was a lot of focus placed onto Dinosaur, and he wasn't even able to... He was utilizing his Kepri ultimates great at the start of the game, right and then side. it just fell apart. Bit of a progression onto a gnome coming out from Predators on this Guan Yu, which we've not really spoken about just yet. But Azarek was hanging around here, as now Rapio takes to the sky on Thor. Predators is still level four, as is Gnome. Both the junglers are level four. Five, but Rapio doesn't want to commit. He was trying to force Hombats' ultimate, I feel, there more than anything else. I think he wanted to force the bot's ultimate or even just try and, I, I guess, make them go more aggressive. But speaking of aggressive... Oh, he missed it. Oof. He missed the ultimate. Watson was just a hair too late with that one, and the beads probably would have still been on long enough for him to continue walking out. Fly escapes with his life, and he's cracking. Might as well go for it. That's one of the circumstances where you just figure you might as well go for it. You know that the jungler is in a completely different lane, sure. so you're safe to pressure that T1 tower line. Well, Elemental's being contested over. Here's a cavalry charge coming out from Predators, who dismounted very early, didn't hit no more Rapio with that. But his pressure with his ultimate has given a little bit of chance for Enix to potentially take this Elemental away. With two more members of Rival rotating over, they won't want to hang around long, though. Interesting use of the ultimate, but at the end of the day, as long as you get experience, it's a win, right? I think Predators was expecting to land that stun onto Gnome, but Gnome was able to escape from it due to the first ability of Bologna, that nice little dash. Even though it's short, it's sometimes all you need. Whatever happened to Guan Yu, by the way? I mean, on console, he's still played, he's still seen as a good character. Protection tread, sustain, cavalry charge with a great he initiation and a lot of damage. a comeback. You reckon? Because his shred is fairly strong against Bologna. Bologna gets the better end of the lane mm -hmm. in the earlier stages, but Guan Yu was actually a pretty hot pick against her just because he shreds pretty hard with <laughs> with this Talo Assault. Definitely. And also, he provides a lot with that cavalry charge and team fights too, because he can slow multiple people if he hits them with the auto attack while riding the horse. And you never know when he's going to dismount. I mean, not, unless he stays on for the full duration, you know when he's going to come down for the stun. But you can always dismount early to stun people in place, which is a very nice utility to hit multiple people or people who don't expect it. And already Rival just looking to stay on these buff timers for themselves. Rapio actually spending a decent bit of time over in the Sol lane side, but it seems like Osric has the same sort of intentions, kind of just trying to hang around the Sol lane since there isn't really much aggression happening on the map elsewhere. Nice, it's very similar to what happened in game one where nobody's really doing anything apart from like, okay guys, here's, I think they've got, have they got a deal on these two, do you reckon? Like, listen, <laughs> we're gonna play for the first 10 minutes of uh, farm as much jungle as you can. And if you come into the jungle and get to the buff first, we won't fight you over it. Welsh Beast got that just about, just so you know, because it did turn blue. Oracle's gonna go the way of rival here, but I think they've got a 10 minute agreement of, we're not gonna fight, <laughs> we're just gonna farm. 
We just want to farm it out and see who gets the better team fight that's afterwards. Why, that's why Predator is dismounted from the cavalry charge. He didn't go for any damage with it and he just jumped off. It's because he made an agreement with the team. What's the player damage like, cameraman? Salim let us know. Oh, hang on a second. Predator's going to escape from that. A thousand player damage. Wow. We. So much to talk about in terms of player damage here, Taco. Talk me through how he's on a thousand right now at five and a half minutes in the game. Well, overall, the team spread is coming up close to 3k, if not slightly above it. So I, I would say that Rival's looking pretty solid in comparison to Enix's a uh, little bit more than 2k. Oh, you were mapping overall, very quickly there. Good we, job. we are just adding some numbers together and hoping the estimations are close enough. Well, it works out right now. The good news is there's two people over a thousand damage now. Predators joins the list, and that's surprising to see both the solo laners less than a thousand damage so far in this game. Rapio rotating over towards the solo lane once more. Mid lane can see 50 meter flight. Is out of mana here as well. This is a go time to put some pressure on someone, knowing that Kraken's not going to be available. Bad news is Rapio's been spotted by Azarek, and Rapio's still waiting. Gets hit by a hammer. Has to run away. And Dinosaur engages, but Fly's got no mana. Fly does have mana now, though, when you think about who he's with. He's with that terror, and it provides the Kraken and the Whirlpool, but still Rapio will get away. Rapio, is he going to go back in is the real question. He's still hanging out there in the air, but he's going to disengage and go back to his heartbeats. Azarek could still be in trouble, but the Eagles rally from Gnome didn't connect, and now with Predators here, it's Predator Gnome is in trouble. Roush Beast with a huge Petrify on the rotation, picks up first blood for Enix and gets Predators the second kill. It was Rival and Enix both little poking out in the mid lane, but Enix were the better ones to respond. Two kills their way, we're finally on the board. Better rotations by Enix actually just led to that fight going entirely in their favor. And on top of that, Rapio just ate so much health. Like, th that yep. Kraken was on point from 50 meter fly. That's the best Kraken he's dropped so far. Yeah, I mean, because it, it hit. It That's hit. when it hit in the middle. But the bad news is Rapio did a very good job of ulting early on to try and make sure he reduced the amount of damage he could get. Nobody else could pick him off. 50 meter fly could have potentially held out for the team fight that followed up, but I don't think that team fight would have happened if. Rival knew the Kraken was still available. But forcing Rapio out of the fight mm. and having not having to worry about a Thor ultimate dunking down onto your teammates is really what permitted that rotation to take place because Predators knew he wasn't going to have to worry about any walls. He wasn't going to have to worry about suddenly getting stunned out of his tower was sold. And I think that's really the most important part. And especially once Gnome dove into that tower yeah. in, the, in the mid lane. I missed it, yeah. Ex exactly. He needed to land that if he was going to try and commit to it. And even then, I don't think he would have had the time to commit with a bludgeon follow-up. Oh, you really don't think he would have got the, I think he would have got the kill if he landed the ult. I, I really think if that ult connected, I think that should have been at least one kill. I, I don't think he had the damage on the okay. ultimate to secure the kill. I think he would have lived and needed to look for the bludgeon commitment afterwards. So I'm pretty sure Gnome was guaranteed oh, dead. No evil guaranteed dead. from Azarek. And Watson takes a lot of damage, but sustained a little bit off the Oracle's bad news. is Predator's teleporting around the back again. And Predator's is playing so well right now, in my opinion. Jacob forced to all defensively and leap away to safety. But the horsey horsey, don't you stop. His hooves are still going clippity clop gonna force back rival a little bit more but a huge bludgeon from gnome makes enix just fall back for a second and go wait a minute that kind of hurt but that red buff is still going to go the way of Enix, and the disengage is pretty strong. They've got the Guan Yu, they've got the Terra. They can sustain this one out. Yeah, they're really using this Terra buff to the, the advantage. The Terra ultimate going out from Dinosaur time and time again. Enix are all agreeing that it is go time when they use that, and it's putting them in a pretty good position right now. I love the fact that they didn't overextend, though. They get the red, they won the team fight, and they're like, okay, we can't realistically get much more out of this as well. Let's just fall back. We'll take the kills. We can use that for bonus gold to get some objectives on the map. Playing it safe is sometimes... You can never really go call. wrong with playing it safe. Sometimes you can, but I, I like this aggressive oh, route. Predators. And predators not playing it safe anymore. One hit from Death. Got a recharge online. All it takes is a basic, and Watson's basics on a Hades. Tell you what, Hades has some of the strongest basics in the game, I swear. That wall they swing. was great. It was a good wall. That wall by Rapio really just prevented any sort of escape route for Predators. And even with the ultimate, he wasn't able to get it out of the way. And now the Cavalry Charge is going to be on cooldown. Yeah, I think it's... Well, to be fair, Cavalry Charge doesn't take too long to come off cooldown, especially playing Guan Yu when you've got the, you know, the Conviction, which will lower the cooldowns of your abilities and such. It will be up relatively soon. The bigger thing is shutting down Guan Yu anyway to make sure he can't be a bigger factor because I think in these team fights, it's Predators doing most of the work for me, going to the back line, harassing consistently and not really being focused.
Well, it, it's hard to focus out the Guan Yu, especially Agreed. with the Terra's blessing mm -hmm. on him. And it, that's really why I wasn't against seeing Enix first pick that Terra, is because we've seen it so often on the PC side of things where the teams will opt for the Terra over the Fafnir. Yep. And that is exactly why, because even with just one other member, Guan Yu isn't even a healer really anymore. His, his heal got altered, sure. and it's not the same as what it used to be, but when you combine that with the sustain from the Terra, it, it's so much. It does add up indeed. Gold Fury is available for both these two teams to look at right now. Wall coverage down there by Azarek straight away. But with Rival rotating in, notice an Enix for moving over there. They're going to ward themselves too, so everybody knows that Gold Fury is safe for now. I think that's probably the best. It's a moment of relief, I would say, for Rival at the very least, because I think in a pure team fight scenario, Enix will typically get the better end of things as long as that Kraken connects. Well, keeping on the levels right now, experience seems relatively even between the two teams. Just Jacob a little bit further behind yet again on this Fafnir up against Terra. I'm definitely going to... I'll be watching his replay back and realize he's just going to hit Coerce and he'll be further ahead than his support. It's crazy that he's not realized that just yet. Because being a level down against Terra is quite surprising to me. Golf Fury. Being looked at again by rivals, the oracles do spawn, and 50 meter fly there with that whirlpool will slow them down. And it looks like both of them actually went the way of rival there. The burst damage coming out from Dobson with that bramble blast, I think, was enough to secure it. It's strong for rival to secure that free oracle vision. It'll keep <laughs> Dobson at least letting him know that he can play a little bit more aggressively, being able to spot out the rotation from Osric because he's got more freedom with his wards now. Yeah, but now that you can put the wards elsewhere on the map, pretty much, you get the bonus exactly. one from the oracles, and then maybe look, put one near, you know, the duo lane and the mid lane as well, so it refrees up a few more. And talk about wards, there's a lot more these days. Even on box, I can see on the map consistently being placed down. Great vision from Rival, and there we go. Beast was looking to give Dobson the same play back. Didn't work out that time, though. Like the idea, just fast feet on that, well, sorry, I guess fast turning circle or fast hands on the side of Dobson to make sure he wasn't facing that petrify. He's quick on the sticks. That's what I was looking for. Good <laughs> job. But, yeah, really well played by Welsh Beast, though. I, I don't dislike that expense of an ultimate, because had he caught Dobson out, it would have at least, at the very least, four speeds. Four speeds. And then having the beads down around the goal fury time is exactly what Rival were looking to do themselves last game. So having Enix do it back to them could cause them some problems. Azurik in the mid lane, level 12 right now. All the relics starting to come online, the secondary ones. Azurik's picked up the Sunder to go along with it. Sunder's still on Dinosaur, who's about to hit level 12. And 50 meter fly still hasn't gone back to base for his yet. Same could be said for Watson, who's still sat at level 11. So Enix, experience-wise, just a little fraction ahead. One thing I find really interesting, though, for Enix is that Azurik actually opted to go into a Sunder as opposed to a Blink. Yeah. So I feel like he might struggle a little bit with Initiation in comparison to Rapio, who's on Thor. In fairness, so you were, we were saying a little bit earlier on, Tara's Blessing plus Guan Yu is enough of a distraction ultimate for him True. to get to that back line and cause issues? I, I mean, the Terra's Blessing isn't necessarily meant as that solid initiating factor, sure. though. Yeah, it's more right. of like a, you proc it while your team is fighting because typically most teams don't want to fight into you. They'll try and play a little bit more back. But I, I think I would probably prefer to see the Sunder going the way of I mean, they already have one on the Terra, and I, I like the meditation choice by Predators, but oh, that Predators. could have been a Sunder. Bit of an awkward position for him, and he has Mystical Mail, though, which is going to provide him quite a lot of sustain. Don't forget that he's passive for the Conviction stacks for the actual heals coming through. The proc of Mystical Mail does count towards them, though. It's on damage and damage taken. That's one of the reasons I think Gnome's not gone into the Mystical Mail just yet, because it actually provides more sustain for Predators, as you can see. And I, I have to agree, I, I really like I got the like wrong way around, but you're right, yeah. yeah. I, I was right, but I don't think Gnome's chosen Mystical Maze is necessarily a good thing up against Predators because it gives him more sustain. I actually yeah. thought it was Predators with the sustain. My bad. <laughs> but it, it, it's still good looks all around for Rival, I would say, right now. They're, they're still leading. They are. Even if slightly, they are still a little bit ahead. And It's gold, gold in the lead of Rival, but the experience is actually was a little bit further ahead for Enix now, but it started to even out once more between the two. These Oracle fights have been the biggest talking point so far, and it's generally the first goal period. Here's what I'm noticing in these games. They're taking a while, and you can tell that both of these teams, I think a lot of it's just boiling down to the respect that these teams seem to have for each other. Rival recognizing that they aren't necessarily the 
dominant, like super power sure. force, I think, anymore. I mean, it's obvious that other teams, Enix is giving them a run for their money. Well, Wild Beast trying to clear the lane up. Jacob has turned up on this left hand side as well. Nothing else really going on. The only thing I can really talk about is a tier one on the right hand side. Predator's doing a pretty good job of pressuring out Gnome in this lane. Now starting to proxy farm. This is to try and trap Gnome in this lane a little bit longer. So players can even back or teleport over to a goal fury if required. The scary part about these kind of games is that when you wait so long to start the team fights, one team fight could literally spell point. what happens. That's a really good point, because if you lose three or four members, then a lot of objectives that haven't been taken are on different cooldowns anymore. We're all up at the same time. Can provide a very, very big swing. Enix around the goal, Fury teleport now coming in from Predators, and we mentioned that a second ago, but here comes Gnome as well teleporting in too by the looks of it, as he's studying base, thinking about his options here. That Predators teleport hasn't been used well. Neither has Gnome's, I think, is now he's in the mid lane too. I want to see a fight break out. When both solo laners use their teleports to try and reach their teammates, it's clear that either side wants to look for the objective fight. So I, I want to see Enix or Rival just engage right now. Don't let those teleports go for nothing. And that's why both the total is still in the mid lane right now. Nobody else wants to continue to aggress because we were hoping to have an advantage at this goal fury. Both teams were having their teleports coming through. Different story though. So both of them have been wasted. And the question is which solo lane returns home first to their natural habitat? Whoever goes home first, I, I mean, I would imagine probably be Gnome because his tower is the mm -hmm. one that's in a little bit more danger. So if Predators makes his way over there, or if the creep wave just keep building up and fighting each other, I think that, that creep wave might be slightly in favor of Enix. Yeah, funny enough, you can see Azarek now rotating back for his speed buff too. Speed buff not available for Rival just yet. So with Predators is now coming over here, he's not going to be here in time to pressure the wave, but Gnomes, they're going to meet at the same time. They basically both have the same idea at the exact time. Hey, I'm going to teleport in. Me too. Hey, I'm going to go out to solo lane. Me too. Let's continue what we were doing. It was nice to see friends on the other side of the map though, wasn't it? Oh, indeed it was. It's a lovely time. Is this what like a, a British tea party sounds like? It's pretty much. This is what European tea party sounds like for solo liners, it seems. Because <laughs> that's exactly what happened, right? I, I mean, it's... They all, they've teleported over, high-fived all their teammates, and when you're good, yeah, yeah, okay, cool, peace, I'll see you later. Team building exercise for morale. That's what it is. Rapio going to take his speed buff here, and Predators is overextended, and I would like to see him potentially collapse onto Predators here, but Gnome's having a different story, because he wants to get the wave to make sure the tier one tower doesn't fall, and while this is going on, Enix is now pressuring that goal period a little bit more. Bad news is they've not got enough members to do so, that Watson's turned up to put Enix in a bit of trouble and get Predators ultimate for free. Oh, no, he didn't. My bad, I thought he died and ulted. It was a dash. Yeah, he just he just used the dash because there wasn't much else follow-up, but no, I'm looking for the aggression now, and Predators, where's your ult? Well, Sunder, that's why. Eagles Rally, Sunder, I would have ulted. Bludge and Hammer to the back of the mush, and that's the end of Predators' rampage through the jungle. One-man advantage, though, now, and what a rival going to try and do with it? Well, I'll tell you one thing, Enix are not letting him try and get any more picks because they've popped the Terror's Blessing. And a beautiful Thor stun catches Osric. I think that that's going to buy his team enough time to just rotate over, and Rival now can easily look for this Gold Fury with yeah. Predators still being dead for another 15 seconds. Five members strung for Rival here, and Enix doing the fan of approach with Rapio going to the sky, looking to make sure Azrax can't potentially get in with that Fear No Evil, but he's given him time to get in. He will dunk straight in place onto Azrax to make sure that Fear No Evil doesn't make a big impact. Berserker Barrage will from Rapio as well. Should be stay a lot of free damage too. And now the members of Enix have to go on the run, and with that Fafnir ultimate once again, Rival will be able to bring this down relatively Ooh. quick as Rapio busy trying to take out Welsh Beast. Just off the mark with the double tap. Had that connected, Welsh Beast was dead. Oh, mid lane, bit of pressure from Rapio again, going to chase out Dinosaur. Dinosaur, who's going to have to rotate around to the right hand side. But Rival looking to pressure a little bit more, either towards mid or even the Portal Demon. And this is kind of what we talked about just a, just a moment ago. It's swings. one little fight or one pick can ultimately result in a team just securing all of the objectives. Too late and from Predators trying to get around there. Nobody kept him busy enough. Although Dobson's in an awkward position. Beats very early on there, Dobson. Got lucky the Predators didn't realize that because he could have just stuck to him, found the stun afterwards. Rival get away scot-free after getting the pole team. I don't think that Predators wanted to try and commit onto Dobson, though, mostly because of the fact that the rest of e Rival was waiting. I, I think that Rival would have turned to try and save their Hunter, and Predators would have probably just taken another spill. So is there anything interesting in builds that you've seen so far, Taco, any, any craziness? Gem of Isolation on Fly, sort of normal, but lacks damage, but more control. Then you've got Divine Ruin on Watson. 
I, I don't think that that's anything out of the ordinary, though. The Divine Ruin, I actually love this pickup by Watson, and its third item, which he already has a power spike because of the Bancrofts and the Pen Boots. Mm -hmm. So he can get away with building that Divine Ruin, and it just deteriorates the healing possibilities from Enix. Definitely true indeed. Rival Siege and down the mid, one tier, one tower. Meanwhile, right hand side, Predators will get the last of that tier one there. And on the left hand side, Welsh Beast has gone a little bit too far forward there. Medusa will not be turned into a piggy because she's a snake, but the snake is still having trouble. Dobson wins the trade out against Welsh Beast again <laughs> and tells him, that's just a silly mistake to make trying to go past my tower. I think that's still a, a fair 1v1, even though there were two other members of Rival available and it looking like a oh. fair, not so much 1v1 against Osric, forced into the bot's ultimate as Rapio tried to punish him. Well, they went all for the speed buff there. Osric gets the speed buff away from Rapio, but now Predators and Fly could be in a bit of trouble on this right-hand side because there's not much Osric can do about it. Fly has to beat out the ultimate coming out from Watson there, and the Kraken does absolutely nothing again. Dinosaur manages to escape, and Predators is keeping them all busy, that they're not really going to be able to pick him off here unless Pro Jacob can find the storm, which he did, but nobody else wanted to collapse. Rival instead got a tear on the left as Dobson, after that picking up that kill, makes sure Azaric has to come over to defend. I think Fly actually also pushed Watson with his title surge into a little bit more safety. So that was also kind of unfortunate. Uh, unfortunate. I indeed. mean, the Kraken was still probably going to be off by a bit, but the outer rings might have at least been able to apply some sort of damage onto Watson to possibly encourage other members of Enix who were around to follow up on him. But uh, yeah, just just unfortunate. That's kind of the story of Poseidon. That's really been the telling tale of this game. Well, SCL over in Europe has three weeks of play because it's four teams strong right now, and every game really matters, Taco. So right at the moment. They're in control. It's not fully over just yet. Enix still have a chance to find a split here. And both these teams getting one point. Would be a boon for the other teams still involved in the SPL to see these two go even if possible. Well, if if these teams go even, that'll leave everybody at one point. But it's looking like Osric trying to catch Dobson off guard here. Just popped the ultimate. Dobson, he's got his own. The wild hunt is good. Surprised he turned around and ran away. He could have continued aggressive because Rapio was backing him up. And Rapio doing a good job. But gets hit by that Petrify. And the Walls the hammer and he's gonna live thanks to the ages coming through too. Dobson is a little bit over standing, but Fly is still here to cause some issues. And Dobson eventually came back to support Rapio, but it cost him his life and now Enix are in control. Tier 1 tower on the left is exposed. Slight overcommit there by Rival. Rapio almost had it. I think he really wanted to full yep. to fully combo well, <laughs> Osric there. Yeah, Osric. Osric should have fallen down for sure. But the bad news is, is that Enix rotated a little bit better and Dobson wasn't on the same page. If he would have turned around, he could have committed too. With Noam being over here though now, the slowdown of the aggression onto the tier two will happen. Enix have pressured mid lane with Azarek though, which is gonna give them a window to just take this one too. And I love that Dinosaur went around the back to stop them rotating in for free. Just anything to slow down Rival reaching that T1 tower. Might as well just pick up that extra 500 gold because two T1s, that's that's 1K in the pocket. And it could be a tier two on the right as well because Enix are just continuing to swing around and cause problems. It's a 2K lead still for Rival, but this tower being worth 50 hundred gold this will make it even and that's kind of just the thing Dobson just now responding but the fight is good rival are looking for more Watson already dropping the ultimate but he's dead to Osric Rapio could get a big five man all he gets at least two there Predators pinned in place but Predators will dash away to safety and heal up his team Jacob transforms into the dragon coming into Dinosaur who's the only one that was left behind to keep them busy and he will fall down to Dobson as the other members of Enix escape two for one exchange rival up an additional member for a few moments I'm gonna call not worth for Enix simply because Portal Demon is going to be respawning yeah. and Fire Giant's already there. They have Dobson. Watson will be up in 17 seconds. It looks like they have their sights set for this T1 it tower at so. the very least. But I can see them 100% swinging over to the Portal Demon, just securing that really quick. Well, it's still 15 more seconds on two members of Enix respawning. Portal Demon flashing away, and Dobson's already swinging away on that too. Protoss will be the first one back to find out the Portal Demon's been started. But he will also find, as he hears the noise, the Portal Demon went to rival. And immediately back in the fray was Watson teleporting through. And that's, that's a safe choice. I, I, I like the safe decisions here, especially when one or two picks mm -hmm. can make all the difference. Just unfortunate for Enix there, because they did a really good job. They get tier one left, tier one middle, tier two right. 
then lose a team fight that costs them so much that gives rival keeps rival in the lead by a good 2k gold lead. Although this gold here from Enix is pretty solid unless Watson can steal it. It won't happen this time around. Enix get the gold and now we're in an even game. Welsh Beast forced to petrify, but Rapio in the sky and Watson collapses it in. Means Welsh Beast is in trouble. Gonna get the fear no evil out of Azeric to help him out. Watson trying to trade off with Azeric because Azeric knows he can't get away from that. He'll fall down to Watson too. Dinosaur surrounded and body blocked to high heaven. Now pinned in the pit. Surrounded and the piggies will come into play. Coming out there from Dobson too to make sure Dinosaur falls down. Predators will give up the goal and head back to base. No, he will not. He gets picked lazy back in. That's going to force out the horsey. And now rival, they could go for the fire giant based off that. No ultimates available on the side of Enix. I, I don't see how they could possibly contest rival inside this fire giant pit. To only two members and the only one with still potential really was Fly. Yep. And the Kraken, he he burned it on the Gold Fury. He burned it on the Gold Fury, we secured it then, but then what should have happened is Enix disengaged a little bit better. They tried to help each other out on disengage. If they would have all just run for the hills, they probably would have had three members alive at least, which could have potentially defended that fire giant and caused them less issues. But because they lost three members, it's now gonna be a fire giant for rival, a tier two for rival. And the whole team is still fully healthy and good to go. I think they will head back to base just to buy up the last little bit of the money in their coffers right now and start to push down for the final tier two towers remaining on those Phoenixes. You might as well spend that goal before you embark on a tower Phoenix sieging journey. So I, I don't dislike that decision by Rival. They got plenty of gold from the Fire Giant and that T2, like you mentioned. So it, it's just safe to back and buy. Sure. Predators now just going to continue to farm up as where he can. You can see the graphs at the bottom of your screen. Well, he's still level 19 right now. Highest player damage on the side of Enix. Those Petrifies have not been too bad this game. But you can see how much damage Rival have really done as a squad here. Four members above anybody on the side of Enix. Enix haven't really been able to connect their team fighting combinations more than once or twice. And those are the fights that they won when they were able to get the bots, the Humbots ultimates into the Poseidon Krakens. But unfortunately, it just kind of has been falling apart one by one because they've been just too spread apart from each other during these fights. Well, let's see if they can group up a little bit better than these team fights now around the tier two towers. Enix are in a position to defend all five strong. And Rival are going to barrel down towards the mid lane there, trying to use Rappi on the jungle on the right hand side. As you can see him on that Thor. We'll be looking for a good ultimate if he can. And that's the thing about grouping up here, Taco. They do want to group Enix, but at the same time, they don't want to group too tight because otherwise Rapio and Watson will cause them a lot of problems. And I, I, if I'm Enix, I'm definitely sweating right now because no idea where Rapio is on the map. And he's so accurate with these Thor dunks that I, I don't see how he wouldn't possibly just jump immediately for Welsh Beast or 50 meter fly. I would predict he's on the right hand side just based on the wards we've got on the left hand side if it was Enix right now. So I know he's around that area. Tier two tower slowly being chipped down here as Jacob will ult very early on. Gnome still tanking this one up. Go noise has been hit by the boys of Enix though as the horse he was used to. Full commitment onto Gnome who's still alive. Azeric, different story. He's about to die. Someone sorts away to safety. Rapio giving chase looking for the basic and we'll find it. Gnome meanwhile picks up Dinosaur and Predator's trying to juke out as many abilities as he can and get the heal off of his team but ran down by Dobson now with Watson diving in too he does have a bit more damage than he bargained for there as he came in but rival have five members strong fire giant under their belt still and a phoenix falls in mid lane Welsh Beast has got to be careful here because well I actually I should say Watson has yeah. got to be careful for Welsh Beast here because if he catches him even the slightest bit, this Medusa is hitting hard. Could this be game right now, Taco? They're I think charging they're in. Commit. Well, they've got no minions in tow, but they've got plenty of damage on their team. With that Fire Giant and only two members to deal with, no ultimates available for Enix to defend this one. And it does look like Rival will take game two after an interesting set yet again. They just completely ignored Welsh Beast. Welsh Beast was just trying to get off as much damage as possible, see if he could take anybody down with him, but did not deter Rival in the slightest. And close that one a lot swifter than game number one. Definitely, yeah. Rival managed to get the 2-0 today. They were expected to do that, but it was in no way near clean. It would have been clean by their performances either. Enix looked great, though. Enix, I think, have showed a significant improvement since when we last saw them yeah. in the previous split. I actually think Enix have a lot of potential this split as well to try and keep the pressure onto Rival and cause some problems. Gnome and fought Bel Blame Bologna, I should say, <laughs> for Rival that game. Made a bit of an impact. I, I think that he had a significant impact. He was just all over the place. And just the follow-up that he had alongside of Rapio, Bloop. that was great. 
Bloop. He, I, I, I don't blame Predators too much for not ulting. He couldn't have got them the hulls. But he could have ulted when he saw Gnome sure. in the jungle I because I would have anticipated an Eagle's Rally to be coming my way. Mm, so okay. I think that he was trying to bait that out and then look for it afterwards. But knowing that Gnome has a Sunder available, just too risky. Caused too many problems for him. Good plays from Gnome coming out. And this is just focused in the team fight. He gets all invested onto him there, the Fear No Evil and the Cavalry Charge too. Doesn't mind jumping in place there just to give the protection to the whole squad as well. And then the beat down of a typical gnome. Oh, sorry, typical baloner, I should say, or a typical <laughs> gnome working out in their favor. And that's all we've got for EU today. Still got North America to come, though, Taco. Let's have a look at the schedule right now. Taco will talk you through it. And we're going to be seeing Astral Authority actually facing off against Elevate. And this is a pretty highly anticipated matchup, considering that Astral has been having a little bit of trouble against these other they North have. American teams since the LAN. Agreed. Astral Authority kind of lost their edge. They used to have a little bit of time ago. We've still got two more matches to bring you after that as well. As we move on to North America for the three sets from North America we're going to have today too. But that's next up, Astral Authority versus Team Elevate. We're going to take a very quick break break momentarily and when we get back we'll bring you all that North American action. Right. Is this your tablet? Wish that I could stay You can't put up a fight in the misty light. 